Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can use parent constraint tags to be able to have an object grab onto an object, throw it, and be caught by another object. So all constraint tags will get a little introduction in today's tutorial. Let's check it out. All right, so here's our little bomber man playing a little bit of pitch and catch with a bomb. And uh, what we're going to be doing is just kind of using a very underutilized feature inside of Cinema 4D, but one that if you start doing a lot of character work, that's very important to use, and that is the constraint system. So basically with constraints, we can define what we want an object to be parented to, and then release that parent-child relationship to be able to freely move the object around. So just like this bomb here. So I have it parented to the arm at some points, and then once it's in the air, it's not parented to anything. You can freely move it around. So let's uh, go ahead, and here we got a little bomber man here. It's rigged up using the little rubber hose technique that I've covered in previous tutorials. If you want to learn about that, go and check those tutorials out. I'll link to it. Uh, up above, but uh, we basically have our little bomber man animated. And the goal, if you don't, if you're not familiar with rigging or anything, basically the goal is where your hand is. You animate this goal to basically position where the hand is. So what we actually want to do is have this bomb parented to the hand, release that parent relationship, freely move and animate around the bomb, and then have it be connected back to the hand so it, it can then be caught, right? So what we're going to do first is make sure this bomb is positioned where we want it to. And that looks good right about there. And what we're going to do is use a constraint. So I'm going to right click, go to character tags and constraint. Now constraints have a lot of options here. It's kind of like the Swiss army knife of character animation where this allows you to define a lot of different relationships between objects. So what we're going to be using today is just the parent uh, constraint object here. So if I go ahead and check that on, you're going to see all this confusing stuff pop up. It's a lot of options, but basically you don't really need to worry about the local offset. This is just stuff that kind of happens behind the scene. But what the parent constraint allows you to do is set a parent that you want to be uh, that you want your object to be parented to. So this can parent your position, scale, rotation. You can see that we only have position and scale or a position and rotation checked on right now. So those are the only two attributes of our object that are going to be parented to the target. So what we do is just define whatever we want this bomb parented to, and that's the left arm goal. So this allows you to basically, if you see now it's actually parented to the bomb, this allows you to parent objects to other objects without needing to drag them as a child in the actual object hierarchy. So especially for character work, this is huge because a lot of things you don't want parented uh, in the hierarchy uh, a lot of the times. So all we need to do now is we have this now uh, kind of parented to our hand. What we want to do is find a point in our animation where we want the bomb to be unparented from that left arm goal here. And I think that's about frame seven here. So what I'll do is I'm going to say that we want to set the left arm goal as the target, right? And we're going to record optimize. It's going to set a keyframe there. So from se uh, frame seven, and anywhere before, that's going to be our goal. But on frame eight, we want to actually release our bomb from being parented to that target. So all we need to do is go ahead and just clear that out. And what we're going to do is hit record optimized again. And actually behind the scenes with this record optimized, it's actually setting keyframes for all this gobbledygook. It's not gobbledygook, it's actually important information, but it's basically records the position in local space of the bomb relative to everything else in the scene. You can see how that changed. So this is very important that we're recording all that stuff. Uh, again, we don't have to worry about it. We're not, we don't need to edit it or anything, but just be aware that it's kind of there. But at this point, 
you can see that my bomb is no longer uh, parented to the hand because we set the keyframe from it uh, being parented to the arm and then we cleared out that target. So it's not actually apparent to anything. So now we can freely keyframe the bomb here. So I'll just set some keyframes here and we'll have this kind of go up in the air. Whoop. It's up in the air and then it'll go and we'll just say it gets caught right about there, right? So at this point, we're gonna set some keyframes. So now we have this going up, down, and this isn't the perfect keyframing job here, uh, but bear with me. And right here is where it's gonna get caught. So at this keyframe, we're gonna go back into the constraint tag and retarget that bomb to the parent, to be parented to that left arm goal. So again, we wanna hit record optimize. Again, it's gonna set keyframes for all of the local offsets and stuff here. That's stuff, magical things going on behind the scenes. And from this keyframe on, we are now gonna reparent the bomb to the hand. So perfect. So now we can go in here and you can see that, you know, with some much better keyframing going on here, we can now have this bomb being parented to the arm, unparented, being thrown up, and then parented again to be caught. Perfect. So again, probably a lot of keyframing to make this look good, but check out all this stuff going on behind the scenes on the freeze transformation. So not only is there stuff going on that we keyframe with the actual bomb going up and keyframing back down, but all this freeze transformation stuff that is animating, that is all, again, magically, automatic, automagically happening behind the scenes uh, using the constraint tag. So really, really awesome stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what if we wanted to play pitch and catch and not just have the object be parented to the hand, unparented, and then parented back? What if we wanted to actually parent this to multiple objects? So what if we wanted to throw the bomb from one object to another object. So we can go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and copy our bomb. And uh, let me just delete all the keyframes and all this other stuff, delete that, and just uh, set all these to zero. And then we have some, okay, everything's cleared out in the freeze transformations and delete the uh, tag there, cool. Everything set back to zero. So what we're gonna do now is, here's my bomb, let's create a couple characters here. Let's have a cylinder. This will be cylinder one and then cylinder two. So what we're gonna be doing is throwing this bomb precariously between these two very brave cylinders that are out here demonstrating uh, parent constraints here. So what we're gonna do, same kind of workflow we are going to first position this bomb wherever we want the starting position to be. So we want it parented to cylinder one from the start. And I'm gonna right click, go to character tags, boom, constraints. We're gonna use the parent constraint system. And we're going to first target this to the cylinder. Now we also have another target. So what we're gonna do is add a target Again, it's gonna add another whole target system, jam-packed with the local offset, gobbledygook stuff, and we're gonna set target uh, two as the cylinder two. So, since we want to set cylinder one as our first target, notice what happens, is this actually controls the weighting of, or the influence of each of these objects on our bomb. If we had both of these weight systems on at 100% and I rotated this, you can see that it's like half of the object, half the bombs being influenced by this cylinder and the other half is being influenced by this. You can see that it's not perfectly matching either one of those. That's because both cylinders are actually acting upon the bomb and have an influence over that bomb. And it's a bad influence on the bomb, I would say. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna say set cylinder one as the first target. So that's gonna bring down the weight to zero on the cylinder two. So this cylinder is gonna have zero influence and this cylinder one is gonna have all the influence. Now when we rotate this, this is looking good. So now all we have to do is go ahead 
and set some keyframes. We're going to record optimize again. So we're going to record all this stuff behind the scenes. Thank you, parent tag, for doing all that crazy stuff. And uh, what we can now do is just like we did with the Bomberman is we can go ahead and just rotate. Uh, just keyframe some rotation values. So we're going to have a little bit of a wind up and throw with all your might cylinder man. And it's going to throw. And right here at the end of the movement or even, you know, anywhere we want to. So maybe about frame 17 is where we now want to release the cylinder or the bomb from any influence at all. So what we're going to do is bring the weight down to 0% on both of our objects. And again, we're going to hit record optimize. And you can see that's going to release it from that constraint. And from frame 18 on, I can now rotate or in independently move my bomb. So I'm going to set some keyframes here and have this kind of arc up. And again, this is going to be kind of bad keyframes. And what I'm going to do is just rotate this so it's in like a catching mode right there. Catching mode, cylinder man. And right there is where we'll set our second uh, or our third keyframe from the bomb. So we have parented to the cylinder, then we keyframe that parenting off. We can freely move the bomb and it's going to be caught by the cylinder here. And let's just set a keyframe for that rotation. So maybe it's kind of like, you know, uh, anticipating that catch, anticipate the bomb. And from this point on, we'll now say, okay, we now want cylinder two to be the parent. So I'm going to hit record optimize. Again, it's going to set keyframes, all this crazy stuff going on behind the scenes. And now if we rotate the cylinder back to, you know, maybe have a little overshoot and then this rests at zero degrees, we can now press play. So we got, whoa, and then it gets caught. Whoa. So again, this is, uh, you know, we're keyframing the relationship. If I just go to my parent tag here or my uh, constraint tag here, you can see we're going from 100% influence or parenting to our cylinder. We keyframe it to zero. Our bomb can freely move. It's freely moving. And then we keyframe that weight percent of the cylinder two to 100%. And now this bomb is now being parented to this cylinder and then follows every movement of the cylinder. So you can see how this record optimize and all this crazy stuff going on behind the scenes is super, super useful and stuff you don't have to pay attention to. You can basically just keyframe your parents and again, record the optimize and have some really cool animations of some crazy wacky cylinders throwing bombs to each other. Uh, and again, we can keyframe this back, but hopefully you guys understand the whole workflow that it would just be as easy as then keyframing this weight of the second cylinder to off, moving the bomb back, and then keyframing back on the influence of 100% weight of cylinder one. And then, you know, we basically have uh, this reverse kind of uh, keyframing if we go uh, back. So we go, what? So basically, same thing, just backwards. So hopefully that uh, opens your eyes up to what the parent. A constraint tag can do and hopefully you can now go out and you know throw throw some bombs to uh, crazy cylinders yourself all right so uh, now hopefully you have a, a greater respect for your parents uh, or at least the uh, parent constraint tag uh, inside of cinema 4d now if you have any questions on the parent constraint system uh, it can be a little bit of a confusing process but uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comments section below try to get to them as soon as i can and if you make anything using the parent constraint system technique you have any of your own little characters throwing bombs or something a little bit more uh friendly uh definitely share them with me on twitter on facebook on the instagrams all over the social medias we'd really love to see what you guys are making out there based on this technique and if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe. Love having all you guys over here watching and commenting. So really appreciate all the views and all the support. 
I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.